king in many respects because of his death. His followers sought with great effort to continue that work, but that work sort of died, right? The notion that you could bring together people who were poor across regional lines, urban, rural, black, white, Latino, uh, to stand up a new movement in America really lost steam after Martin Luther King's death because without the power of his personality, without the power of his words, his followers could never really, uh, if you will, get that campaign off the ground. And then, of course, there was the election of 1968, the election of Richard Nixon and the Southern strategy and the beginning of a backlash against what the 1950s and 1960s had represented when it comes to civil rights. I think we ought to think about the now in terms of how, in some ways, we've come full circle uh, and the parallels of 1968 to 2018 are quite stark. Uh, from the administration that's in the White House to, uh, if you will, the fact that notwithstanding this uh, you know, vigorous economic expansion, there's still high rates of poverty and that they're working men and women who, although they are working, are not earning sufficient money to make a decent living in America today. And so we've got to, I take inspiration from that uh, to learn about what Dr. King uh, said. I think the key thing about uh, where we are today uh, is that uh, the civil rights movement of the 1960s gained power because its aspirations had moral clarity. Moral clarity. Concept of right versus wrong. And Dr. King framed it by using the American Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, uh, and religious teachings to talk to the American people about why, in those days, civil rights uh, was right. I think the question is, uh, can we, in this time, in this period, in 2018, uh, find the same vision, aspiration, about what we're trying to do in the country. I like to look at it as in the 21st century, we're trying to build in, 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 in truth and in fact a multicultural democracy. A multicultural democracy, multicultural, multi-religious, multi-orientation, has never existed in humankind. And we're on this journey, right? And the friction in the country is a friction between those that see the past as the vision for the future and those who understand that the vision for the future is grounded in the past, in the lessons of the past, in the good of the past, in the bad of the past, but is something very unique and very different for 21st century Americans. So I think trying to think about it.